Hi, my name is Ali Shezavar and in this video we're going to talk about using ceramic capacitors and the DC biasing issues in a power supply's output filter. Uh, it has become increasingly popular to use ceramic capacitors on the output filter of the uh, power supplies. However, as a DC voltage is increased across uh, the ceramic capacitor, the value of the capacitance will fall. So we're going to demonstrate this in a LC filter and we're going to see how the value of the capacitance might be a lot less than what you expect. Okay, so um, if uh, you get you consider for simplicity again a buck converter, we have an LC filter on the output. Uh, now, it has become popular to use ceramic capacitors over here, and also often for EMC purposes, you have got a second stage filter which is much smaller, and again, you've got lots of ceramic capacitors over here. Now, an LC filter, as we know, will have in frequency domain a resonance, like so. That is frequency, this is your magnitude, and that is the resonant frequency. And again, we know that this is the resonant frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi the square root of LC, where L is the inductor and C is the capacitor. Therefore, if we measure this, if we, ban if we plot this frequency response and measure the, a, uh, the resonant frequency, we do know the inductor. We can assume that the value of the inductor stays constant in the frequency range that we are considering. That is not an unreasonable assumption. And then we can calculate the value of C as we increase the voltage. And you can see that if this, if the capacitor falls, this will have to increase. The smaller the value here, the higher the resonant frequency. And we will show on the Bode 100 that as we increase the voltage, you're increasing the curves that look like so. And we will calculate these resonant frequency and we show you how much this value of the capacitance is reduced as we increase the bias voltage. So now we're going to go to the test setup and we're going to do some measurements. Okay, so here we've got our test setup. We've got an LC filter here and uh, we have got a line injector from uh, Pico Test over here. So what this line injector does is that it takes the DC biasing voltage, that's just DC that goes in. We have got the signal that is being injected from the Bode 100 and it superimposes the two and therefore we can inject our sinusoid that we need plus the DC and then we uh, measure the uh, impedance and we will see the resonant frequency. Um, the voltage, the DC voltage, is being supplied by the, by the power supply and as I increase this, if I am correct and the value of capacitance is going to fall, I expect this resonance here to go up and I'm going to give you some values of what's these, these represent in terms of capacitance. So uh, we are starting right now with the uh, 2 volts instead of 0 volts. The uh, manufacturer actually measures and specifies a ceramic capacitor with 0 volts. So they just put a pure sine wave in and they give you the capacitance value. The values that we've got here is 39 microhenries worth of inductance and 47 microhenries worth of capacitance and it's a 10 volt capacitor. Unfortunately we cannot go any lower than uh, 2 volts um, mainly because the uh, line injector will stop working and we cannot make a clean measurement. So right now we are not measuring with 0 volts we are measuring an AC signal superimposed on top of a 2 volt signal. And here I have set up the uh, um, Bode analyzer suite to give me the resonant frequency. So the resonant frequency is 4.6 kilohertz. Now, if I really had a 47 microfarad capacitor, I would expect to have a 3.7 kilohertz resonant frequency. So at 2 volts, I have already lost a certain amount of capacitance. And 4.6 kilohertz is roughly around 30 to 32 microfarads. I expected to have 47 
So it has already fallen down within two volts from 47 microfarads to 39. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to gradually increase the voltage, the DC voltage, and you will see that this resonant frequency is going to move to the right. And moving to the right represents a lower and lower of capacitance. So I'm going to move this up. I am now going to 2.5, 3, 4, 5. You can see that it's beginning to move to the right. 6, 7, 8, which is exactly what we expected with the DC bias, 9, and I'm stopping at 10 volts. That is the rated uh, voltage of this uh, capacitor, ceramic capacitor that we're using. And you can see from Voidy Analyzer Sweat that this is around 7 kilohertz. And at 10 volts, 7 kilohertz resonant frequency with 39 microhenries of inductance gives me a capacitance of 13 microfarads. We bought a 47 microfarad capacitor. It has gone down to 13 microfarads. That is 25% of what it is supposed to be. Um, and that is the DC biasing issue. And you need to take this, this into consideration if you're using these type of capacitors in a power supplies output where typically you do have a DC voltage superimposed on top of whatever signal that you've got. Um, I can push this capacitor a bit further and you'll see, I mean, now it's working beyond the manufacturer's recommended uh, 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 voltage. So you can see that as I go up more and more, the capacitance keeps falling and falling and falling. And now 20 volts, 23, 24, 25, 28, 29, 30. Okay, now, now my power supply cannot do more than 32 volts. The uh, resonance frequency is around 15 kilohertz. And 15 kilohertz is in fact 3.7 microfarads worth of capacitance on a 47 microfarad capacitor. In all fairness, it was never designed to be operated at 30 volts. Uh, however, even at 10 volts, it had fallen down to 25%. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope uh, to see you in one of our workshops. Thank you very much.